Hi everyone, this is James. I have a new video for you. Now, the question is, is the wedding of Cana related or talking about the rapture in the future? So let me go over this and I also have some information about the lunar eclipse, the prenumbral lunar eclipse that's going to be happening starting today and some other possible connections. So let me begin. Now I will start by reading John chapter 2, 1 through 9. In the third day there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus saith unto him, They have no wine. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. His mother saith unto the servants, Whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. And there were set there six water pots, sorry, water pots of stone, after the manner of the purifying of the Jews, containing two or three firkins apiece. Jesus saith unto them, Fill the water pots with water, and they filled them up to the brim. And he saith unto them, draw out now and bear unto the governor of the feast and they bear it when the ruler of the feast had tested the water that was made wine and knew not whence it was but the servants which drew the water knew the governor of the feast called the bridegroom i'm just going to stop there now i want to make a few comments about some of the words and the numbers that were used in the scriptures now it says on the third day now Jesus Christ you know when he died he rose again on the third day is it talking about his resurrection or the connection to that and possibly us raising on the third day so I just wanted to comment on that and also marriage now when the tribulation starts or Jacob's trouble we are going to be taken out those that are born again will be removed and will be saved from the test or the trial the whole world will have to be subject to so and the Lord he referred to it as a marriage seven-year uh, marriage uh, banquet okay so I, I just want to make a comment on that and you got six water pots of stone now six that's man's number okay water pots okay and then you've got stone you know Christians followers of Jesus you know they're born again are referred to as stones okay and you also you also have two or three firkins you know two means unity or could mean division three could mean resurrection okay and it's also the third in the Trinity the Holy Spirit okay but they are one so um, so I just thought that was very interesting and it, in the next slide, I'm going to kind of go over uh, some other details. Um, let me continue and I'll show you. Now, I draw this illustration out about a year ago about the wedding of Cana. Just some of the observations that I found. You know, of course, this is conjecture. You know, these are just guesses. But I'm going to go through this real quickly. So just bear with me. Now, this here is the water pot. Okay and some of the verses are kind of connect with the numbers so let, let me show you what i what i found possibly now this is the wedding at cana john 2 okay 1 through 11. now the third day at the wedding you know i mentioned before in the reference the third day of creation now i've kind of i think it's more related to jesus christ when he died he raised he was raised on the third day and possibly our resurrection okay the rapture so and then three of course in the Trinity got three in the Trinity God the Father the Son the Holy Spirit okay and then you've got six water pots that symbolizes man's number the seventh verse Jesus filled water to the brim uh, three equals Holy Spirit okay a resurrection okay and then you've got 33 promise we see in the scriptures and also if you see Ephesians 1 through 13 I recommend you read that verse okay and 
in the eighth verse, I thought this was very interesting. Eight means eternity, okay? And Jesus said to draw out now. So, you know, is it, could, we, could it be referring to the Lord, you know, when he raptures us, takes us out, he's drawing us out of the pot or out of the nations, out of the waters, okay? You know, actually here I, I wrote water, also referred to as people or nations. So is he going to take us from the earth draw us from the nations and the non-believers okay and take us you know to tabernacle with him for seven years until we come back in the new millennium now that's possible and i just i think that was a very interesting very um you know it could be possible verbiage like rapture, rapture verbiage draw out okay now the ninth verse the ruler of the feast tasted Okay, call the servants. Now, nine means fruit of the Holy Spirit. So, when Jesus Christ, you know, he, you know, it was just actually his first, uh, that was his first miracle. So, it's the fruit of the Holy Spirit. You know, he created or he changed the water into wine. Just like when we believed, the Holy Spirit came into us and sealed us, okay, with these a seal of the holy spirit of promise okay if you go to ephesians 1 through 1 through 13 you'll see that which is uh, i once i read that years ago i'm i was uh, you know it was very uh, made a big impact on me so i, I just want to show you that and now in the 10th verse in the beginning serve good wine at the end okay i'm, I'm just gonna that's kind of self-explanatory but 10 means gentile number uh, fullness you know maybe uh, the timing you know the full and the fullness of the gentiles happens he's going to draw us out so you know that kind of is appropriate number um to this time and then the 11th first this is the beginning of the miracles jesus did so maybe this is the one dispensation ending the church age or the grace age and then going into Jacob's trouble or the, or the tribulation. So these are just some observations I made over a year ago. Some, you know, some of these things, you know, I've kind of, you know, changed what I kind of thought, but, or how it's related, but uh, I think it's interesting. And uh, now back then I must have noticed that in the Torah calendar, it's a, second month 17th day means victory and that's what in the, in the next few slides you'll see that where we're at um so i i think i'll leave it there um you know i just but here those that believe the gospel <clears throat> excuse me are born again you see 1 corinthians 15 3 through 4 and also it says the scripture says that in john 3 three that we had to be born again of course i'm paraphrasing that so please look that up and 1 corinthians 15 4 in that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures i just wanted to include that so let me continue to to the next slide and i'll talk about the prenumbral lunar eclipse now i want to go over this prenumbral eclipse real quickly now, this prenumbral eclipse begins now May 5th at 11.14 a.m. Eastern Standard Time because I'm near Ann Arbor. Now, the maximum eclipse is going to be 1.22.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And the prenumbral eclipse ends May 5th, 3.31.45 p.m. So today. So that's very interesting times when the eclipse is happening. And I want to go over some scripture verses with you again now amos 8 9 and it shall come to pass in that day saith the lord god that i will cause the sun to go down at noon and i will darken the earth in the clear day and joel 2 3 1 the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the lord come so it'll be a terrible day for those that are left behind but for those that are born again and are taken to be with the Lord in the clouds and then with our Lord, it'll be a great day. 
So it'll be a wedding a celebration, a feast. So I can't say that the rapture obviously is going to happen or the tribulation, Jacob's trouble is going to start. But all the signs that we're seeing in the heavens, you know, on earth, you know, it's, you know, I really feel that it's close. But, uh, you know, time will tell. You know, I'm very excited, you know, all, all the things that are happening. And now we believe that this is, you know, a lot of people believe it is the second Passover. I still kind of think that um, I, because of the signs of the heavens, I think this is actually the, the true Passover. But, uh, you know, we will we'll find that out, uh, especially uh, when the rapture happens and with our Lord. We'll find out exactly what the cal true calendar is. But uh, let me continue. I, I want to show you a few other things. Now, I'm not going to spend a lot of time in the next few slides, but I just want to show you a few observations that I found. Now, I've talked about God's fingerprint, or also known as the Fibonacci Golden Sequence. Now, if you take a look here, you got one, one, two, three, five, eight. Okay, I'm just going to stop there. Now, we're looking at right now. Now, I'm going to show you a clock that I feel by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit the Lord wanted me to create in the next slide. And it's got a few observations I want to just show you. So you've, you've got 2 plus 3 goes into 5. This is how the sequence works. You know, each one adds up to the next. Okay, so 2 plus 3 equals 5. And then, okay, 5, or sorry, 3 plus 5 equals 8. Okay, 6 is not actually in the sequence, as you can see. Okay, so 3 plus 5 equals 8. I just want to show you that. And the reason being is, now in in the clock that, again, I feel the power of the Holy Spirit, the Lord wanted me to create this. Now the 3 goes into the 5. Okay, so 3 and 5 and in, equals 8. And right now we're looking, you no know, really high ta watch time, extremely high watch time, I think, is from today, say mid today or midnight today, to the 8th or the 9th, okay, of this month, so May 8th. And with the scripture verses I talked about, the Cana wedding, it kind of, I, I think, connects, but again, it's just conjecture, it's a guess. But, um, you know, I just thought that was, it's very interesting, and I feel that the Lord, if, if he was going to, um, you know, the rapture was going to happen, I think that it would correlate to got his fingerprint. Is, you know, I, I think you know, it's total conjecture, but it's a possibility. So, that you know, it does kind of make sense. And also, one fifty-three, like the parable of the hundred fifty-three fish, and then Isaiah fifty-three. Okay, so that. Again, another uh, possibility. So, and I just want to go over these numbers again. You got 16 means love, 30 me 31 means offspring, and 17 means victory. 32 actually means covenant, 7 means spiritual perfection, completion, and 8 means eternity. So, and then we also got a small 9, okay, and then 11, just like we're in this, you know, fits with the with the calendar right now where we're at 911 so you know if the rapture happens of course it's going to be 911 that's going to be a terrible time uh, for the people left behind now before i go on to the next slide i also want to say that may the 11th 2023 okay now it is 74 years okay 74 in Dramatria means cross or jesus okay now, before I go on, I just want to also make one other uh, comment. Now, May 11th, 2023, that's also just coming up, again, is a very high watch time because from May 11th, 1949 to May 11th, 2023, that is 74 years. Okay, 74 in Germantia means cross or Jesus, and it's also 888 months. Now, that means... In Greek, the, the value of the Greek letters for Jesus adds up to 888, okay? And also, the biblical meaning tied to that number also means resurrections, first resurrections 
of the saints. So I thought that was very interesting. So again, that's a very high watch time around May 11th up to from now to May 11th. I think is a very high, high watch time. So I just wanted to add that. And again, I don't think I was very clear that. So tying in with the Cana wedding possibly and with this clock. Now the three goes into the five. Okay. So maybe tabernacles in the five and then it goes in at the eight so maybe you know in this time period the rapture happens maybe it could happen in the eighth but again this total conjecture total guess but uh i just thought that was very interesting so let me continue i only have a few more slides i'm just going to go by a few more verses and i'm going to end this video now i want to Read Revelation 11.3 And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand, two hundred and threescore days clothed in sackcloth. Now that's 1260 days. Now if you're watching this video after the rapture happened, you're left behind, don't worry. There is still hope. You still can be saved. you got to turn to the two witnesses. They'll come on the scene probably shortly after the rapture. I don't know when but they should come after okay and they will get the direct truth right from god so you're going to want to trust them going to be a lot of deception the antichrist and the false prophet and all and many of the kings of the earth are all going to think the same and try to mislead you um you're going to want to open your bible and read revelation daniel the gospels paul's epistles read the bible trust god not in man trust the word of god and i recommend the king james version of the bible and you, you're not going to want to take the mark or worship the beast or follow the beast or to, uh, do any laws that are going to break uh, or go against what God, you know, his word. Okay. So that's the two witnesses are going to be there for you. And of course, the word of God. So please trust in God, not in man. It's. I just wanted to emphasize it's so important again not to take the mark of the beast don't take any jabs don't you know that is uh most likely the, the delivery system or part of it and any nano tattoos or chips to put in your hand you know again um you're going to want to turn to the two witnesses now i want to end on john 3:16. for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life now god loves you all he wants everyone to be saved you know if you believe in the lord jesus christ you can be saved okay so i love you all thank you very much god bless